to an instant favourite with TV impersonators. She is in the habit of vanishing from time to time, but the garbo of pop has emerged from the shadows. Welcome to Kate Bush. <laughs> in the spotlight deliberately? Um, I think on some levels, yes, I do. But the main thing was I wanted to spend a lot more time working rather than um, spending a lot of time promoting the work. It all seemed to be becoming more promotion than, than the work I was doing. So you decided work was more important. And have you been now beavering away in the potting shed for your next project? Yes, I have. We've been working for about uh, two to three years on this album that's coming out um, probably middle of September. And it's taken a long time. It's very intense work, really, being sort of shut away in a studio. And this is The Red Shoes? Yes, it's called The Red Shoes, yeah. Is this based on, on the film, the ballet film? Well, it, it is very much connected with the film. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Michael Powell, the director of The Red Shoes, before he died. And um, he was such a sweet man. He was really sweet. I thought one of Britain's best directors. And um, he had a very strong effect on me. He was a very sweet man and uh, he seems to have popped up in two or three of the songs that are on the album. Was he dead by that time? Uh, by the time um, I was writing the songs, yeah. Mm. But, uh, Austin's recognition. Yeah. Because your first number one in 78, it was inspired by a classic, of course, Wuthering Heights. And we talked about that on a little program called Ask Athel. <laughs> Well, those were Kate Bush's with her first hit. What are the inspirations for for Wuthering Heights? Simply the story. Well, I hadn't read the book. That wasn't what it inspired it. Um, it was a television series they had years ago, and I just managed to catch the very last few minutes where there was hand coming through the window and blood everywhere and gloves. And I just didn't know what was going on, and someone explained the story. Mm. They were just hanging around for years, so I read the book in order to get the research right and, and wrote the song. And that had just stuck in your mind all those, all those years? Yeah, it, it was, seemed so strong. It's very cruel of the audience to laugh at you like that. <laughs> you haven't changed at all. Uh, are you sick of references to that number? I think I am now. I think at the time it was fine. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was 15 years ago, and I think, um, although it's nice that people uh, remember it and remember me, it is nice to feel that when you're working on something that you're considered to be uh, a contemporary artist, I suppose, rather than going back to something such a long yes. time ago. Well, it was so different, so astonishing. Victoria, what was your uh, first impression of, of Kate and, and that? Well, when I, when I first saw it, and I was not at a very good time in my career, I, I, well, first of all, I thought she was mad, probably. A mad woman had slipped onto the airwaves. And then, really, I thought that it was very, very good. But I didn't want to acknowledge it was very good because I was feeling very insecure at the time. And then I read a review by Clive Gent, and he said, this woman is either a genius or she's barking mad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, it probably falls somewhere between the two. Yes, do you think that's a fair assessment? Yes, I do. I think I probably am truly mad. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, it's quite <laughs> but the theatrics, of course, were something we all, all admired. Now you, and, and, of course, you've been a pin-up since you started doing this. Uh, this week, we had a lot of letters in the office when they knew you were coming, and I can't imagine what Did you're... Did you have any letters about me, Matt? Not one, Not one. Have they been sending berets? Hmm? <laughs> have been sending the berets? <laughs> Not the berets, no. Just nice I letters. <laughs> but do you, are you still enjoy being a male fantasy? Um, well, I'm not sure if I've ever really enjoyed it. Um, horrible question. Yes, it is. It's a horrible yes. question. Yes. Do, another do you one. enjoy being a male fantasy? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and so do I, so there we are. <laughs> now, you did just the one tour in 1979. It was a terrific extravaganza. And you did things that Madonna is really just coming around to thinking of, isn't she? I mean, that the tele telephonist headset. Was that your idea as well? 
Well, uh, as far as I know, it's the first time it, it was used live because um, I wanted to be able to move around and dance and, and use my hands. And um, at the time, the engineer, the sound engineer that we were working with, came up with the idea of actually adapting a coat hanger. He actually used a coat hanger and opened it out and, and put it into the shape. So that was the prototype. And Madonna wouldn't use a coat hanger. That's probably the difference. Yeah. She would insist that it was done properly. Except for opening a car with, probably. But why have you never repeated all this and done another tour? Well, I, I did enjoy it. I think a lot of people think I, I, I didn't actually have fun, but I did. It was, it was great. But I think I found it um, a bit overwhelming, as well as it being very hard work physically. I think it was a bit rough for me being so exposed publicly. Mm. I find, found that a bit rough. And then I, I suppose I wanted to just retreat and, and work. It did all come with a rush, didn't it, of course? The yeah, those first few years were very intense. Yeah, yes. It was quite overwhelming, really. What about the image of this vulnerable pre-Raphaelite girl? Is it is a pure invention? Um, well, I think uh, I think everyone's vulnerable on some level. But pre-Raphaelite, I suppose that's um, probably a lot to do with Wuthering Heights. I think a lot of people. Mm. I mean, do you live in a Gothic mansion with candelabra? Uh, no, not at the moment. No. You mean you have? <laughs> I'm planning to. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Can I ask? But what's your style in decor? Oh, it's Victoria? like Kate's. I live next door to her. In the <laughs> Yours are very passionate and, and provocative. Um, do you get inspiration anywhere? Um, I think it is elusive stuff, but I think really the biggest inspiration is people. I think uh, people are, are just so inspiring. They're fascinating and wonderful. And I, I think you know that nearly every idea that a person has had has probably at some point come from another person. And I can't think of you giving a different reply. No, that, I'm not going really. to. No, I'm going to give the same reply. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, the things do come from people. What, what else is there, really? If, you, if you're going to talk about any sort of human relationship, comedy or whatever, it has, it has to be based in life. So it has to be based on people. But do you always do the housework first and, and put off writing? I've read you do that. I don't. No, I don't put off. I mean, I do. I do. You know, I do deal with poo first. That's always the, that's always the priority with the babies. Do baby the poo. poo Kate, do the poo, yeah. and then do the writing. Yeah, I, I didn't like Kate. I'm in an office mm. all day, just doing. You know, trying stuff out. I do it the other way around, I write and then have a then poop. poop. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry about that. It's time for a... That's why you're not a male fantasy, if I might say. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a break now. Uh, Kate will be singing for her warm glass of white wine later. But in a few moments we'll have Lenny Henry.